Hello, thanks for checking in with the questions and I look forward to more of your questions in the future, so keep bringing them on. Today's question comes from Nancy and she asks my thoughts about a particular situation. When you have your jaw in the chin rest and you are incredibly dominant with your right eye and you do a lot of learning with that right eye, what happens is, is students will turn their head to see with that right eye, to see their fingers or the music. And then this becomes, doesn't even have contact with the violin anymore. Almost your chin is in the chin rest instead of your jaw and you get this funny tilted head angle. That has everything to do with the right eye being very focused. I'm going to answer Nancy's question in just a few minutes. I want to go through some background first. It's common for people to talk about are you a righty or are you a lefty, which hand do you write with? But we can also be dominant with our right eye or our left eye, our right ear or our left ear, our right foot <clears throat> or our left foot. And believe it or not, all of this comes to play when you're studying in an intense musical instrument like the violin. How you learn where you're more dominant really becomes highlighted when you're tackling a difficult instrument like the violin. So, let's talk about how you would find out if somebody is dominant on the right side or on their left side. To find out if they're dominant with the right eye or the left eye, you just curl up a piece of paper and you say, pretend this is a telescope. What do you see? Oh, look, your right eye dominant. Most people are, but I do have a student who's left eye dominant. Obviously, we can figure out right-handed or left-handedness. Same thing with the listening. Just pretend there's a telephone. Hey, telephone, it's for you. See which ear they put the phone up to, right or left. And to figure out if they're right-footed or left-footed, just roll a ball on whichever foot they go to kick with. That will be their dominant foot. Now, Let's talk a little further. Why is this important? Well, we have the right side of our body being controlled by the left brain and the left side of our body being controlled by the right brain. Our left brain, which controls the right side of our body, is dealing with more concrete and you know, clear analysis, like math, things that are concrete. The other side, the right side, is the creative, more verbal side. More, that's what people call the more artistic side of thinking. And so the left side of our body is controlled by the right brain. Now, left hand, whether you're lefty or righty, we don't refit violins. You just always play violin and the bow the same hand. I know that guitars switch around, but in the violin, in the string, classical string playing world, we don't really turn the instrument around. And it's interesting because I did have my undergraduate violin teacher was right-handed and my graduate violin teacher was left-handed. And it was very interesting because sure enough, my uh, undergrad violin teacher was very analytical and he taught a lot about expression with the bow, the right arm. And my graduate teacher, being left-handed, taught me a lot about vibrato and being expressive with the left hand and he was very creative. <laughs> it all comes together. All right, um, feet. I want to talk about feet. There's a reason why, because I had a student who specifically was having trouble with feeling the beat and playing rhythm. And I said, okay, stomp your foot. And he starts stomping his foot and was very uncoordinated. Well, guess what? He was using his right foot. 
Now, the right foot is controlled. Excuse me, I said that wrong. He was using his left foot. And his left foot is controlled by his right brain. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you're feeling the beat, doing math like you are with subdivisions and rhythm, that you're going to need the left side of your brain. And so I asked him to tap with his left foot. It was very awkward for him, but I did request that he practice that way so that he can use the left side of his brain to feel the beat. Let's talk about the ears. I know a lot about this. I'll tell you why, because I had to go through all of this with my son. My son said what for years. What? 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 We did a number of programs for him. We had to reintegrate his eye tracking and we had to do tracking with his ears. We did a lot of programs. And when we did the listening program, it completely took away that what. In the course of trying to figure out what was going on with my son, I discovered that he was dominant with his left ear. And this is interesting because if I say, if I would say to him, would you please put a fork and a knife and a spoon on the table, you'd get a fork, maybe a knife, and forget the spoon. He just couldn't remember. And then you'd get the what? But as soon as I found out that he was left ear dominant, I talked to that left ear and I said, oh, would you please put something to stab with, something to scoop with, and something to cut with on the table? And sure enough, he would get a fork, a knife, and a spoon on the table without any problem. Now, I have had him do the listening program, he's reoriented and he is able to function in both ways now. I can say get a knife, fork, and spoon, and I can say the other way, the, the more artistic way as well. Uh, but he was an extreme situation and with many of my students I could identify what's going on with them, but if it's an extreme situation I will ask the parents to address it in their own way, see if they can get help. And now for eye dominance, which was Nancy's question to begin with. If a student is so right eye dominant that they are turning their head to learn and to see, then really, quite frankly, I let them do it. Now, that's just for the initial learning process. If they can play a number of songs memorized with beautiful posture, keeping the jaw in the chin rest without turning their head around, then I use that as the basis of their practice. At that point, when they're learning a new song and they really need to focus with that right eye, I let it go because they've got to use their strong channel to learn. And then I'll reintegrate, okay, now I'll be the nag and we'll work on, once they know the song they've gotten over that initial hump, we'll work on integrating back with the other technique. I had a very extreme case of a student, whenever you put a piece of music in front of her, her posture would just go out the window. And her mom, being a violinist as well, drove her crazy. And what we ended up doing was pretty interesting. We hung her music from the ceiling. And we put it a little high so that she can actually get underneath it and keep her posture and read her music. Now, she was pretty extreme, and I know that um, kids go in and out as they grow. That left eye, hopefully, by this time she's a teenager, has woken up, or that hopefully she's gotten some help by now. Anyways, it's just interesting to see how all of these different things come to play and how they define a person and how they learn. I just want to summarize that I can identify a lot of these things, right eye, left eye, right foot, left foot, whatever you're dominant, I can identify them. I, I can't necessarily help you with them, but it does get me a quicker idea into how to teach and how to talk to that person and how to organize things so that they're not just being frustrated all the time and I'm not just being a nag all the time.
So there, Nancy, is a long answer for your short question. <laughs>